Okay, so I've been using the new Active Track 360 system in the DJI Mini 4 Pro now for the past couple of weeks. I showed it off in my review video of this drone, and I also posted a full Active Track flight having the Mini 4 Pro follow me while I was on my one wheel from start to finish so you could see how it operates and how it behaves. And now, here in today's video, I want to go over how to use Active Track 360 to get the best results possible because I think that this is one of the biggest upgrades that we've gotten from Active Track in quite some time. Now, let me preface this video off by saying that Active Track 360 is currently only available on the Mini 4 Pro. The feature was first introduced with this drone and is currently being marketed as a feature that is specifically available on this drone and this drone alone. With that being said, there is no reason that this feature couldn't be added to the Air 3 or the Mavic 3 series because all of these drones use the same upgraded obstacle avoidance hardware. These cameras provide omnidirectional obstacle avoidance to look for obstacles around the entire drone through upgraded cameras that have a higher resolution and a wider field of view. I would actually love for this feature to come to a more powerful drone like say the Air 3 or any of the drones in the Mavic 3 series. The way that Active Track 360 works in a nutshell is you can tell the drone exactly where you want it to follow you around the subject that it's tracking. And if you had a more powerful drone, it could make more powerful maneuvers around that subject in order to get from spot to spot. This will all make more sense as we get more into the video. So Active Track 360 works just like it does in previous drones. Right from your home screen, you'll select your subject of choice by drawing a box over them, selecting Active Track, and then pressing Go. From here, the drone assumes complete control and will begin flying by itself without any input needed. Now, just like previous versions of Active Track, we also have the option to select the trace or parallel following mode. Personally, I think that this new touch wheel and touch trace interface is really going to make the parallel flying mode a thing of the past. I think it's now just going to go all through this wheel, which don't worry, we'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But basically, the difference between trace and parallel, with trace, it'll follow your subject from behind. So if I'm the subject, it would fly behind me and use its forward obstacle avoidance sensors. This was the limitation when drones didn't have omnidirectional sensing. So it used its forward sensor sensors to fly forwards behind its subject. But then once we started to get side sensors and you know, the backward sensors, we can now fly parallel. So fly to the side of a subject and use those side sensors. But now with touch trace, you can tell the drone to follow you from any direction you want. So again, I think that this is eventually going to just come into one interface, which is the new touch wheel. So as I've been mentioning here, what makes this new version of Active Track so special is the touch wheel interface in the bottom left corner, which now allows you to easily control your drone's position and distance from the subject that it's following. It also now gives you an accurate representation of where the drone thinks that it is. To give you an example of where we're coming from, this is the old UI used on the Mavic 3 series and the Air 3 during Active Track that allows you to choose where the drone follows you from, but was a very bare bones version. So, getting into things here, after you select your subject, the drone begins the process of figuring out which way you're moving. By default, it'll begin tracking you from behind. So, as your subject begins moving, it'll make the necessary changes after analyzing those initial movements. In this case, as I walk towards the drone, it understands that it has to move around and start following me from behind. From here, I can now provide any input whatsoever, and the drone will keep following me from this position. I can start to deviate from my straight walking line and the drone will make the adjustment to get back in position behind me as the tracked subject. Now here's one of the reasons why I find the new touch wheel UI in the bottom corner so powerful. Because you can tell where the drone thinks that it is in regards to the subject that it's tracking and you can see the route that it plans to fly. So for instance, if I cut quickly to the side, it'll realize that I've adjusted my direction. It'll now show on that touch wheel that it's following me from a different side and it'll show me a green line that is the route that it plans to fly to correct itself and it moves pretty damn quick to get back into position. One of my gripes with the old Active Track system is that when you told it to change positions, it would eventually get there, but it would always take its time and move very slowly. And it was always a guessing game. Like, does it know which way it wants to follow me from? Does it know that I even told it to fly from the right side? So now it's so much more responsive and gives us a lot of information using the new UI, which is really great. Okay, so now let's get into the meat and potatoes here. And that is the fact that you can interact with this wheel and tell the drone where you want it to fly at and in which direction you want it to take to get there, all while still following your moving subject. So for example, from behind, I can tell it to fly to the right and arrive in the front right following position. Once I give it this command, it wastes no time to maneuver around me and track me right from this position because remember, it knows the direction I'm moving and therefore can understand exactly where it needs to be flying in space. Okay, now let's get a little more complex. For this next command, I'm going to tell it to track me from the front left, but I'm going to have it fly behind me and raise its altitude so that it's following me from further away. This is such a cool feature to take advantage of because with older active track systems, I would just tell it where I wanted to fly and it would make its way to that position on its own, doing really whatever it wanted. Now I can tell it the direction that I wanted to fly, which it does here perfectly. It spins up and around, giving me this really dynamic looking shot. My one gripe is that it is a little bit shaky. Like if I wanted to pull this shot off on my own, I think that my version would be much more 
smooth, but if you're new to flying or if you're actually using the drone to track yourself while say skiing or riding a bike, then it would make sense that you just want the drone to handle everything for you. Now let me show you one more example here and for this I'm going to have the drone follow me from behind to start. From here I'm going to give it a simple direction to move and follow me from the front, but every time it gets to the halfway mark I'm going to cut the opposite way almost making a circle. The reason I'm doing this is because I want you to see in the bottom corner how fast the drone reacts and understands that I've changed directions. Like as soon as I start moving in a different direction it updates its location to understanding that it's tracking me from behind and updates the route, letting me know that it needs to now fly a full semicircle to catch up. So I think that this is just the beginning of some awesome new tracking and autonomous flight features coming to DJI's drones. I mean, this right here, this single feature is such a step I would say jump in the right direction that again, I can't wait to see where we are in three to five years from now. These things are going to be really, really smart. Okay, now let's go over some, I'd say miscellaneous points and bugs that I found when using ActiveTrack 360 so that you can understand what the drone is doing when you're out there using it for yourself. So first off, I noticed a tweak in the algorithm in terms of determining the direction a subject is moving. This is pretty obvious as I showed how the drone was able to quickly adjust when I changed directions in the examples that I showed. Here's the issue though. Sometimes I noticed that the drone would drift off to the back left when I was telling it I wanted to follow me from straight behind. Like this clip is from my full active track flight and notice how it starts to veer off to the side. It would eventually get lost in the trees, which was frustrating when I just wanted it to follow me right from behind and not from the back left. Now this isn't confirmed, but if I had to guess why this happened, Maybe it's because when riding my one wheel, like any other skateboard, I'm facing kind of to the right while riding forwards or while riding to the left. So maybe the drone got a little confused and thought it had to move to the left to follow me from behind. Also remember that active track is smart enough to understand what it's tracking. So it knows if it's a human subject, a boat or a car and will tweak the tracking algorithm accordingly to best suit your needs. With the new upgraded version of active track using this touch wheel, you can only change the distance that the drone flies from the subject when tracking a human. If you instead are following a car, you just have the ability to change the position and not the distance, which is kind of a bummer. I wonder what the reasoning behind this is. Like, is it because the mini four pro isn't powerful enough to keep up with a fast moving subject while changing positions and also changing distances that could be one of them maybe we need an even better set of camera hardware like better sensors than what we already have now and maybe they're just holding it off for a higher end drone to come out like who knows maybe an air 4 or a mavic 4 i know it's crazy to even talk about an air 4 when we just got the air 3 but those are just the things that are going on in my mind again i wonder why they limited this to only tracking a slower human moving subject. Now here's another thing. When moving fast and making quick movements, the drone seems to lose its subject much easier and doesn't make much of an effort to hunt down the subject it was tracking. It lost me four times when I was riding my one wheel, when in previous flights, it has done a really good job at determining my location and picking me back up. For example, with the Air 3, I made a quick 180 degree turn and the drone was able to stick right with me without any issue. More impressively, with the 70 millimeter lens on the Mavic 3 Pro, it bobbed and weaved through trees to track me down after losing me. This is still probably the most impressive thing that I have ever seen Active Track do, especially for using the narrow field of view on the 70 millimeter lens. It really was crazy. Now, something else I've noticed is a prompt that will come up when there's a complex environment. The prompt actually reads that there is a strong obstacle interference, almost like it's talking about the transmission system. This prompt is really cool though, because just like the touch wheel, it gives you an understanding that it's experiencing a slight issue so that you can maybe slow down, change course, or maybe even come to a full stop to let the drone catch up. It's also smart enough to understand that that as you give it commands to move around you as the moving subject, it'll be looking out for obstacles. So if you're say swinging to the side, but there's a tree there, it'll avoid the obstacle and then continue to move where you wanted it to. Now this brings me to my final point. Using active track with the RC N2 or the RC2 is super annoying. We need to have some form of control or controller that works with active track tracking only flights. I keep referring back to me on this dirt bike riding through Moab, but it's such a good example as to the issue that I'm referring to. I had no mount for my controller, so I couldn't put it anywhere. I had to try to hold it with my hand while riding on a bumpy terrain. It was just overall not a good situation and I couldn't just throw it inside of my backpack because I might press the screen or sticks and completely mess up the flight. So there I was left to hold it and I almost crashed and dropped it so many times. So like if I'm on my one wheel or if I'm in my car, I don't mind having to use the controller. Like I can easily hold on to it with my one wheel because I don't have a remote controller and in my car, I could just put it in the center console or put it on the seat next to me as it follows my car. So in those situations, I don't mind using the RC2, but for those times where I'm going to be using my hand doing a more action style sport, I don't know where I'd put it. Like sure on the dirt bike, if I had a bike mount, it might be easier, but again, it'd be annoying to have to interface with the screen and have to tell it where I want it to go while trying to ride. It would just be an annoyance. 
So here's my thought process. Here's what I am pitching to DJI. Give us some sort of control, like a smartwatch, whether it's developed directly by DJI and if it's its own hardware, like its own watch, or if it's a companion app for the Apple Watch that allows you to communicate with the drone and have it follow you. Like, could you imagine directly on the screen telling it, follow me from the left? follow me from the front. Maybe you could tell it to start recording, stop recording. Give us this control through the watch and don't make me have to use this controller because that would make things so much easier and allow me to use this drone in areas where I otherwise wouldn't because I can't carry this controller with me. Also, voice control would be awesome. Like, could you imagine saying, hey, DJI, follow me from the left. Hey, DJI, follow me from the front. Hey, DJI, start recording, stop recording. There's so much there, but as I mentioned, we seem to be only getting our feet wet with these active track and tracking functions from DJI, and I hope that it just continues to explode over the next couple of years. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on ActiveTrack 360 down below, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.